Hey, hi everybody, David from Explore Oz. Uh, Traveller app version 9 uh, intro or updates. What's happened since we've uh, launched Traveller version 9? For those that use it, here we go. So the first thing that's new within the, the version 9 is the new setup wizard. Obviously for our longer term users and stuff, you may never get to see it. For our new users, we've rewritten the setup wizard. It's a lot easier now. Um, it gives you a, a full page of information and it tells you what each of the operations are. We're sort of skipping through it. It, it. We've already logged on, but if you weren't logged on here, you'd still do your log on things and you get a bit of information telling you how to do it. So as you step through each of the steps, you get the text and you get the options to take you through the setup. You can obviously come in here and change settings. We'll just leave everything at default, whatever it installs to start with at the moment. Then you come to the, the last one, which is the help guides one. So we basically throw you at the help guides. You can obviously read these now or you can read these later in the help guides option on the main menu and you'll see it's actually telling you about the main menu here and how to find the content later on so the new wizard kind of cool and it gives you access to everything that you uh, might want to find on your way in and setting up the app for the very first time it also tells us it takes about 10 minutes to do a basic setup and 30 minutes or so to do the full map installs and everything else so now that we're on the main traveler uh, explorers traveler main map screen um, you'll notice that we're out uh, on the Great Central Road doing this video at the moment, and we actually are. Um, and one of the first few things that you might notice that are different is there's a, there's a little line here. Uh, that's different. And you'll also notice that there's a new button up here, uh, the folder button. So what we've done is we've separated the folders system and the content search and content management system. So if we firstly have a look at folders, what's different about folders? All of a sudden you'll notice that there is something different and there's subfolders. So that's one of the big feature updates of version 9 are the subfolders. I'm just tapping on each of these subfolders to open up the list of uh, items that are within it. And it's giving you a sum total count of all of the uh, places that are in each of those folders or each of the items because it's not just places that are in these. There's track logs and all sorts of stuff. So this tra oh, track log to promote is full of track logs. So it's not just um, places, it's all the data. And it's giving you a count and a summed count of each one. So obviously in horse, there's 15, there's 8 and 7 equals 15 when it's folded up. That's exactly right. To create a new folder, I'm sorry, I'm shooing away yeah. the flies here. Um, to create a new folder, you press this uh, little folder group icon. You'll type in your name of your folder that you want and you'll select the folders that the full folders that you want to go into that folder group and you'll hit tick and it'll create the groups for you just like that. So folders and subfolders is a new feature. The other changes obviously with changing the content menu, we've changed the way the content system works. In the past you would have had when you've come in you would have had places, tracks and uh, track logs uh, options on the menu. Now we don't have them. You come in and you just get places, treks and track logs, single entry. Um, there's no personals and sheds and all that at this level. So how does this work? Obviously, first thing that looks a bit different is the search is above all three. So if we just do a search for something um, easy like Sydney, <coughs> what you'll see is we get all of our Sydney place results. But if we go over to treks here by tapping on that button, you'll get the treks that have got the word Sydney mentioned in them and if you're wondering why there's some that aren't in New South Wales Cobber Coast will have the wreck of the Sydney in it more than likely I'm not sure what crow jing along has Sydney in it it's going to have it in there for some reason and then in track logs we're also seeing all our Sydney based track logs so the search carries across all three of those pages okay so we clear the search now what happened when we cleared the search is that you'll see this other little icon appeared and it's a little history icon. So what we're going to expect to do is if we hit that, we're going to expect to see the history of each of these panels that we may or may have opened. At the moment, it's showing zero. Because we just ran the intro tutorial, I had to reset my app to uh, default. If we open up a place, either from the list or from the map, and we go back to the content menu, And we refresh our recently open all right so i came back in and i hit the history panel and it's now showing us that we opened that place if we opened you know other places that list will grow 
each one of these lists can contain 30 items in your recent history. So 30 places, 30 treks and 30 track logs would be visible had you had the last 30 would be there. Okay, so what are the other things that are different in here and how did we manage to consolidate places from personal and um, explore of? What we've done is we've extended the filters. Now, this little filter button here uh, where it says all places, if you tap on that, it brings up the places filters option. And you'll see, for those that have used the app a fair bit, you'll see now that we've got explore of and personal under the type filters. This is where you can specify just to show you your personal places versus the explore of places. So if we just click on that and hit apply, we're now seeing all of our personal places. If we click on it and say explore of, we'll only see the explore of places. If we clear that out, we'll see both. We obviously don't have any near where we are places visible on this list. If we did have, and we go back to the personal just for one more second, I'm not sure if we've documented this before, but all the personal records have got this little green dot on them next to them uh, in the list. So when you're looking at a large list um, and you, you know, you're scrolling through, your personal ones will have a green dot on it. Obviously, when we're just viewing our personal ones, they've all got the green dot. Um, but if you were to scroll through here far enough, you'll find the little green dot will appear. Same for here. We don't have any personal data that's near where we are right now. But you'll get the little green dot. Okay, so the same sort of thing has happened for treks and for track logs. So in treks, the little filter option again, same position. We've now got explore of and personal. Uh, and obviously all the other ones that you can do. And track logs is basically the same. Um, and you can also still specify your four-wheel drive, two-wheel drive, and all those other bits and pieces. Okay, so what is next? Um, okay. okay, so the other things, the, the, the other major things, the content filter expansion. So the next one, I mentioned to you this little line up here on the on the map, and what the heck is that? That's our new road name system, and right at the moment, we're GPS locked, the little orange on our uh, little marker here is telling us that the GPS is locked onto our current position. So you can see our little blue marker is pointing that we've locked the GPS and our position on the map to that little, to that little marker. So we're right at this Yala Kajara, if I've spelt it right, Kataja or something. Um, we're right here at this campsite. And so we, the GPS is locked and we're on this little private access road here. Um, we, we've made a note that this actually shouldn't probably be private access. Um, it is a, a road into a camping area that's permitted on the Great Central Road. <coughs> it's currently marked as private and that's why we're seeing private access. If I unlock the GPS really quickly and I can now pan the map around, I'll just close that dialog box by just tapping on the map. If I hover over the Great Central Road, you'll you'll see it'll tell you the Great Central Road. It'll also tell you the position of where the crosshairs are. That feature has always been there, the position, but now we've got the road name under it. So you can hover over this. It probably won't know that. It'll be an unnamed track. Obviously, if you're in the cities and things, you can go across and see all the suburbs and all the roads and all the streets and all the bits and pieces. We're just out somewhere where it's... I'll, I'll go quickly into... Let's hear the highway and hunt just down there. Oh, yeah, I'll just quickly go over to somewhere a little bit more populous. Let's just jump into Alice Springs for want of a better place. And if we hover over the roads here, you'll see Memorial Avenue. If we go over here, what's that one? That's an unnamed road. We'll come down here. It's Flynn Drive. So you can get that information for all of those. Also, not only does it do um, the roads itself, but it will also do your paths. So if you're out here and you're on a designated path, that's an unnamed path, for instance. But if any of these... Um, paths and tracks had names on them, Tim's track, so there's Tim's track there, it gives you those as well. So if you're doing long um, walks or things out in the, in the bush, you can find out what the name of your track or road is. So unlock the GPS, when you move your cursor crosshairs, it'll tell you what your road name that you're under, and when you lock, it'll be where you are. Additionally, when you have it locked on where you are, we also have a speed option if you're traveling along this road this particular road doesn't have designated speed set up in the app but if you're traveling along a road you'll get the speed symbol up here displayed a, a round ring with the 
red, a red outer circle with a white inner standard road sign with the speed, the recommend or the, the maximum speed for the road that you're travelling on. Now we've set those um, options up in settings. So if we go into settings, we tapped on the main menu. This is the main menu menu. We go into settings here, tap there. <coughs> Under map screen, tapping here. Down near the bottom of map screen, oops, down near the bottom of map screen, you'll see show road names, tick. Show road max speed, tick. So, well not tick or whatever, it's on. So those two elements will be on. They're on by default. As I said, once we did the tutorial, we didn't change any of the default settings. So this is how it will come up when you boot it. So road names and max speeds are some of the next uh, features that are in. Just while we're in settings, I'll show you uh, a couple of the other ones that we've done. Uh, in your navigation, uh, in, sorry, in EO Topo, I'll show you the next one. We have this new one called cluster separation under EO Topo. Um, and cluster separation is when the clusters that are on the map, if I zoom out, you'll see these clusters here. <coughs> and the further out you go, the more clusters you'll get. So these clusters, they'll fully expand at the cluster separation level. So we've got that configured on this device at the moment at 11, uh, at 12, sorry. So once I get to 12, I'm just getting it to 11.9, you'll see that there's a cluster there. You'll see that these are unclustered because they're far enough apart that it doesn't need to cluster. These two are, are going to be on those two water holes there, so they're within a certain distance, so it clusters them. As we get to the number that we specified as the maximum, they popped open. So in that setting, EO Topo, cluster separation, right? You can change it from 11 to 14. If you take it down to 11, you will get a warning that it may affect map screen performance. Depending on your device, you may see some lags on the screen if you if you set that too low. So if you change that and you're having a problem, set it back to 12, which is the default. Next thing, uh, under some of the other changes that we've made, down here you'll see a few more colour choices if you know these sections. This is the navigation section. So just under the bit that talks about your routing exclusions and your widths and your walking speeds and that sort of stuff, you've now got two new settings. We always had calculation colour one and two. We've now got current leg colour and next leg colour. So you have the option to change these to whatever you like. We've picked the colours that we think work best with the map um, by default. If you don't like them or you want to make something change them, you can just tap on it, select from the list of colours, whatever you wish, there's plenty there, um, and change it to whatever you like. I just hit the reset button. So if you do change that and you're wondering what on earth it was, just come back in hit reset and it'll set it back to the system default. Now those are the navigation, calculation, next leg and leg colours and the cluster separation. So the other, a couple of other quick things that we've changed on the map. Um, you'll see here, we've restyled all the Trex track logs uh, and all of those line features on the map. They used to be black lines with a white, Trex used to be a black line with a white uh, centre line. We've changed that now. It's just this black, uh, loosely opaque line here uh, that sits, and, and that is the trek line that's sitting on the map screen. So it's a little bit, it's a little, a lot easier to still see the road type underneath it while you've turned the trek layer, while the trek layers or the treks are turned on. So it, it just makes it a lot easier to see. So you're basically being able to see through it. The other thing that we've done is in the um, navigation plans, and I don't actually have one running at the moment, the next leg and leg colours will be um, opaque and you'll be able to see the road mm. features underneath it. So you can still see that it's a dash line or a solid line or whatever under those uh, segments of the navigation plan. So that's an, a, a really important feature that went in um, to version 9 couple of other quick ones uh, if you're in a bit busier areas or where there's lots of stations and homesteads and things uh, I'll just pop out here in New South Wales somewhere um, just somewhere out here because I know there's plenty of stations around in these areas somewhere. okay so you'll see these little locations before but each one of these you'll see this well, blow clear just use that one for instance you'll see our standard markers here on this southwest woodland nature reserve in the previous 
there would have been one of those markers on this blow clear. It's now just a little blue dot. Um, you can still access the little blue dot by tapping on it. Um, and it's still the standard, this is a station, it's still the standard interface. You can still do everything with each of these places. You can tap and open it. You can edit, you can do all the bits and pieces that you could in the past. It's just that to reduce the number of clusters for what we've sort of identified as less likely to be tourism features, we've just made it a blue dot. So they'll turn on at zoom level 10 and they'll be off under the zoom level 10, no matter what filter or feature options you might have. Obviously those features of the filters and things have all traveled through into here. And so by tapping on this all places, I get to that same filters and now the explore of and personals are also in there. So you can make those changes to the filters at the same time. So other... <clears throat> so the other things um, that we've changed is in the left hand menu, very small changes. We've changed the upload file to import file, um, the name of that. And in the export positions, we've changed the little date selection tool here to something a little bit different. Uh, it still will only give you the ability to select uh, positions within the days that you've been traveling. So if I pick from there to there, it also will come from Perth or somewhere. Oh, it's not saying anything. Um, so you can select the export to track log stuff from there. Uh, and what else have we done? That's about it. So look, they're the main features of version 9. Oh, there was a few more. Sorry, yep, I forgot about it. Um, the about guides, obviously we've... Sorry, the help guides are now, there's 10. Uh, instead of we had eight in the past, so there's an extra one. Uh, and they've been fully rewritten to support the new version. And we've got... Um, Terms and privacy is a new menu option. <coughs> we used to have um, a privacy policy link on the on the left hand side. Now we've added just uh, some more information, more details about your privacy po our privacy policy, and uh, a disclaimer on and terms of use links uh, to get to the information if you're wanting to check out the terms of use within the app. So they're the main changes. So there's version nine in a sort of a quick run through. We didn't go through everything, of course, the entire app. That was mainly just the changes for version nine. Uh, we hope you like some of those changes in version nine. We've put a few months of effort into it. We think they're great. So hopefully you'll like it and uh, give us some good reviews and uh, we'll catch up with you with the next tutorials and information in due course.